Okay, hi there. Welcome to our next video looking at the balance of payments. We've been through the accounts. We've been through the economics of a current account deficit. Let's spend a few minutes uh, thinking about some of the underlying causes of a country running an external deficit, a deficit on their current account. Here's some of the data that we looked at in the previous video. Uh, the reason for selecting these countries is that they're all running current account deficits in 2019. Uh, that's the deficit in trading goods and services, primary and secondary income. The UK runs a deficit of around 4% of their GDP, similar to countries such as Colombia, Chile and Nigeria. But there are countries, notably at the bottom of the table there, that are running huge, huge current account deficits well in excess of 10% of their national income. Now, oftentimes there's quite a bit of volatility in the data on the current account. Uh, the current account is, is clearly the balance between lots of big numbers. So balances can go up and down over time. But when we think about what causes a country to run a current account deficit, otherwise known as an external deficit, I think it's really good evaluation to make a distinction between cyclical and structural causes. In this case, we're going to be thinking about a trade deficit in particular. Cyclical versus structural is a superb way of getting high marks for evaluation, particularly on the longer questions. So what do we mean by cyclical causes? Well, that means that the trade deficit of a country tends to go up uh, if a country is experiencing an economic boom. Oftentimes in that situation, incomes are rising, per capita incomes increasing, consumer spending and borrowing is rising, perhaps the savings ratio is declining, households saving less and spending more. And the act of spending will lead to an increase in the demand for imported goods and services, which, unless the export sector uh, is able to achieve something similar, tends to cause an increase in the size of a nation's trade deficit. Key concept here is something called the marginal propensity to import. You've probably come across this when you looked at the multiplier, the complex multiplier. And in many countries, there is a high marginal propensity to import as our spending goes up. A significant, chunky percentage of it goes on imported goods and services. Uh, some economists say that the income elasticity of demand for imports is pretty high, particularly for things like those finished manufactured goods, a new car, a new smartphone, a TV screen, and so on. Uh, a structural cause, structural causes focuses on the supply side of the economy, and suggests that sometimes a country's trade deficit is, is the result of an inadequate supply side performance. Low investment, maybe low productivity, not enough businesses operating at the cutting edge of innovation, not enough businesses able to scale their production to increase exports or meet domestic demand. Now, this uh, let me re-emphasize this point for you. The distinction between cyclical and structural, aka supply side causes, is an excellent source of evaluation for a longer answer in A-level and in IB economics. Short term causes, let's focus again, let's go back to the short term causes which are mainly cyclical in nature. Uh, so for example, it could well be the case <coughs> that there's a fall in the value of, of an export, particularly if it's a major export. Think about countries heavily dependent on primary products such as oil and gas and copper and, and, and zinc and tea and coffee, etc. If there's a fall in the world price of your major export, uh, in other words, a decline in the terms of trade, that's likely to worsen your current account. Second cyclical cause, a boom in consumer spending, rapid increase in spending, a fall in saving, which drives up the demand for imported goods and services. The exchange rate can be quite an important short-term factor, particularly if there's a strong exchange rate. You see, if the exchange rate appreciates that, other things being the same, it can make your country's exports less price competitive in overseas markets. Uh, that could squeeze demand for exports. It also, by the way, a strong pound or strong exchange rate also makes imports relatively cheaper in the domestic market. So that can cause people to, to switch their spending from domestic goods and services towards import substitutes. More, um, generally speaking, uh, when there's an economic boom across the economy, not just consumer spending, it could be the case that there's a construction boom, so you have to import raw materials such as cement and bricks and steel. 
It could be the case that your manufacturing sectors are growing and they need to import raw materials and component parts. A broadly based economic boom often leads to rising import demand. Oh yeah, really key point. I haven't noted there, but I think it's worth mentioning. Not all the causes of a deficit on the trade balance are necessarily the result of a, of a poorly performing economy. Oftentimes during a cyclical boom, the trade deficit will get worse. Australia is a good example. Australia, uh, their export patterns are such that they depend heavily on trade with China. Uh, be it exporting liquefied natural gas, coal, iron ore, much exported to China. And therefore, when the Chinese economy is doing well, when demand and output in China is rising, uh, that tends to drive the world price of these things up and the Australian export industries will do particularly well. However, when the world economy slows down or when China slows down, Australian exports of these things tend to fall and their trade balance worsens as a result. Longer term causes. Again, it's important to understand that there are short term and long term causes of a current account deficit. Uh, this distinction between cyclical and structural causes is really key. So long term causes tend to relate back to key factors affecting aggregate supply in the long term. So, for example, low rates of capital investment. The UK economy tends to invest around somewhere between 16 and 18 percent of GDP. That's relatively low compared to other countries, particularly countries like Germany, United States, South Korea and China. And if you have low investment, that can hold back productive capacity to export and it can also impact on your cost competitiveness. A long term cause could be the fact that the country hasn't kept control of inflation. You see, if you have relatively high cost and price inflation, that will make you less competitive with your trade partners over time. Non price competition, also particularly important in international markets, branding, innovation, performance and the functionality and performance of products really key in trying to sell in world markets. And a final long term factor could also be that some of your big export sectors of the past have declined. There's been a long term structural decline of a previously dominant export sector. In the UK, we, we have experienced deindustrialization. Many other countries have seen that too, where the size of their manufacturing sector, where often a high percentage of the products made are exported, has gone down. Deindustrialization means that you don't have a big manufacturing exporting sector to the extent that you once did. It could be the case is the long term decline in an extractive sector, perhaps because you've over extracted uh, renewable natural resources of you over extracted and produced finite uh, natural resources from underneath the ground. Can you see from this slide that there are oftentimes some significant underlying long term factors causing a country to run a trade or a current account deficit? These things are important. What I'll do in the next video is just take you through, I think, three examples of how to build chains of reasoning in an exam answer.